Halloween folks and welcome to DeadPit.com's Halloween Horror Picks 2007. I'm the Creepy Kentucky and I am Uncle Bill. We're going to be talking about all kinds of Halloween horror films for you and your friends and your family and your adopted children to enjoy this Halloween. And this is stuff folks. Great little yeah. movies, you know. Yeah, this is not going to be your average uh, yeah. Halloween list. Though. We're not going to review stuff for you. We're just going to tell you, well, basically tell you a little bit about the movie and why it's so great to watch on Halloween night. That's right. And most people, when they pick Halloween lists, they always throw in stuff like, you know, My Living Dead and Halloween the movie. And those are all great movies. But the Exorcist. Yeah, The Exorcist is another one. But it's been done a million times. Mm. You've heard about all these films. You know that you're going to be watching them. And they always come on the Monster Fest and stuff like yeah, that. These are not your traditional Halloween movies, I guess you would say. Right. And we're doing this outside. You can probably hear the bugs and all that stuff, too. Yeah, we don't so. really even have a theme for the movies we're going to no. They're not broken up in any kind Just of theme. fun little movies to watch on Halloween. So, the first film we have up is from 1973. Director Robin Hardy. It's a weird little horror musical known as The Wicker Man. And Anchor Bay has a new two-disc edition of this out, which came out, I think, late last year. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's an excellent little eerie, freaking weird little movie, to say the least. Christopher Lee stars in this movie uh, as Lord Summer Isle, I think is the name. Mm -hmm. And it's just a weird, you want to talk about spooky movie, folks. The Wicker Man is it. You can go and check that out. Anchor Bay, uh, you know, I definitely plan on watching this myself on Halloween night. Please, God, do not confuse this film with the remake of Nicolas Cage in it. Oh. Oh, for God. The, re see, the remake of Nicolas Cage yeah. is about an island full of ugly feminist women. And this one is about a bunch of hippies, basically. Well, they're not really hippies, but it's kind of like a hippie thing. A satanic want, hippie color. Yeah, you don't want to get these uh -huh. these two films confused because you'll be in for a bad Definitely night. Definitely, you don't want to do that. Yeah, but again, The Wicker Man, a great, awesome, kick-ass, ultra-uber-fabulous horror musical. So... Brent Eklund in that movie, by the way. Yeah, she does the naked uh, hippie dance there towards the end, which is awesome. You're doing hippie dance. You're doing hippie, 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 hippie dance. We're going to be talking about one that I think doesn't get any kind of recognition. Doesn't have any respect at all. No, either. this is uh, Anthony Hickox's 1988 film, Waxwork. Yeah. And this has actually got Waxwork too. Lost some time, but don't watch it. Yeah, movie. please don't. Don't uh, waste your time with that. This is like one of the only films I've ever seen that's actually an anthology that doesn't really claim to be an anthology. It's about a group of kids that go to a waxwork because they were invited by the creepy owner one day. And He's uber creepy. As it turns out, whenever they enter into the waxwork itself, it kind of, the waxwork sucks them into the own world. Like if you go into the, the mummy waxwork, if you walk into that, then you're actually in like a scene from the mummy. Mm -hmm. You go into the Dracula in the same way. So it's a bunch of different films in one film. You got your Dracula, you got your mummy, you got your werewolf, you know, a story, all these stories are in this one film. Plus you got Zach Galligan and Deborah Foreman and Patrick McNeese from the old so, Avengers. Sad scene. thing about this movie is though, it doesn't have a DVD worth of fuck. Well, transfer fucking sucks. This is like they transferred it directly from a video. And I don't appreciate that. Hopefully someday uh, we can have a special edition of this out, Anchor Bay or somebody can release it. But in my opinion, that's what we you know, get. You know. It's an awesome film. It's it got a lot movie. of dark humor in it. Some great special effects, and just an overall really cool story. So check that out. That's Anthony Hickok's and Wacker. A fun movie to watch on Halloween yeah, night. Don't, again. don't try to take it seriously. Yeah. Another one you don't need to take seriously. A lot of people might be surprised by this. A Kurt Newman joint from 1958. It's the original Fly, and in my opinion, it is the best version of the Fly out there. I know there's a lot of Cronenberg fans out there. Mm -hmm. You love Cronenberg, but you're not huge on the fly of Cronenberg. It's not right? my favorite movie yet, yeah. no. So this one, I'm sure everybody knows the story. You know, mad scientist creates a uh, uh, transportation device, and one day when he's trying it out, a fly just boogies its way in there, right. and uh, turns him into a fly creature, a man fly based on all that stuff. And uh, Star Wars Vincent Price, the original one, the original Fly, great little movie to watch on Halloween night. Beautifully shot, actually had, I think the original one had a, a large budget, and that's in uh, Uber Fantastic 235 to 1 widescreen. 
And also, Cola. is this the same film, if I remember correctly, that has the shot where the guy is looking at the woman and it looks like he's looking through a fly mm -hmm. over the camera? Yeah. Like, uh, they have like, uh, I don't know, it's like a cascade of the woman screaming, you know. Yeah, so. and that was pretty big for back then. So. Yeah, it's, a, check that it's out. a really original sci-fi slash horror film, I guess you would say, but it is another one great to watch around the you know, October Halloween season. Yeah, so recently, unfortunately, uh, a drunk driver claimed the life of the director of the film I'm getting ready to talk about right now, mm -hmm. and that's probably one of the bigger losses that we've had in the whole community, and that guy just recently got sentenced to like six years in prison. Which is a joke. Yeah, it way. is. He should be raped by a thousand yeah. people over. So, but this doesn't have anything to do with Halloween horror films, but this is, in my opinion, his best film. This is Bob Clark's Death Dream. Death Dream. Oh, my God. Look at that. That's fucking awesome. Yeah, and uh, it's a really early movie, too, from, like, 1972, I think. Yeah, it, it's, I think, one of the earliest films that Tom Sweeney ever worked on, aside mm -hmm. from maybe Deranged and some other stuff. But it's the story of a Vietnam veteran who comes back from war, and his parents are trying to figure out exactly what part of him came back, because there's obviously something wrong with him. Something not quite right. Yeah, he doesn't say a lot. Him. He always wears sunglasses. Yeah, he's completely changed in his, his affect and the way that he acts and everything. So very violent in yeah. certain instances. And know. so this film is basically like a, a really dark psychological thriller, but it's also like a slasher too. And probably one of the best performances that I've ever seen is like a lead character yeah. in a horror film is in this film. The guy does a great job in the movie, uh, excellent movie, way ahead of its time as we've said many times on the show. It's, pr it's pretty relevant actually right now with what's going on in the world, probably more so than it was. Yeah, I mean we'd heard that it was going to be remade but I'm not sure if that's going to happen now, so who knows. But yeah, this is one that a lot of people don't even know about and because Bob Clark is mostly known for probably what, a Christmas story and Some Black Christmas. Black Christmas. Christmas theme there I didn't even think about. But yeah, this is probably my favorite film is his best film I think. Death Dream. Death Dream. Go buy it from Blue Underground. This is one that may surprise a few people. It came out a few years ago. Um, it's a little psychological horror uh, film that uh, I would yeah, it's definitely uh, underrated. I don't, I don't hear too many people uh, talk about this one directed by James Mangold. Identity. Really, we saw this film at the theater. Yeah. I remember we had no idea like what the hell this was supposed to be about or anything. Mm -hmm. But I was pleasantly surprised because it's not really a horror film per se. I guess. Yeah, it's more long like psychological thriller. Like I was saying, um, you don't really know what the hell is going on in this movie until the very end. Exactly. I know that a lot of people are, are held up at this hotel and are killed off one by one, slasher style. But it does have a twist ending that uh, a lot of people may not appreciate nowadays because it's been done to death. Yeah. But I think it is an underrated little film that came out, what, 2003, I'm thinking? 2003, around 2004, that. around that time frame. So definitely check it out. John Cusack, one of the movies, uh, definitely one of the movies with Amanda Peet and uh, Ray Liotta that is a rare exception to the rule that they're actually good in the, in the movie. So. Ray Liotta's in good film. Let's come on, man. Come on. You're fine. So. But yeah, it's also got that creepy guy in it. Yeah, he was in a bunch of other stuff too, but I can't he's in an X Files episode. Mm -hmm. Whose eyes twitch uncontrollably right. when he's looking at you. Right. And that's just fucking weird. Yeah. That guy's probably he, he's known for doing that. Yeah. I, I don't recall the guy's name, but he's, you know, he's it's a not like he's doing creepy. like a man or anything. I don't think he can stalk us. He's man. a creepy son of a bitch. He is a, so uh, moving on, speaking of creepy shit and creepy people, this next guy that I'm going to be talking about, this next director actually scared Lloyd Kaufman. Yeah. I mean, he that, really that's, that's hard genuinely to do, scared folks. Lloyd Kaufman. Lloyd Kaufman. But, Lloyd Kaufman's a scary son of a bitch, you know. Yeah, he He's thought that right. that guy was a little bit too creepy for even him. But this guy made one of the most bizarre, universally loved cult films to come out in the 70s anyway. This is Joel Reed's Blood Sucking Fox. You'll never look at hot dogs the same way again. Yeah, I, a lot of people reference the final scene in this movie because I think that was the first time anybody had even dared show anything <laughs> like that. Yeah. But the whole film is just like one big amalgamation of just the sickest shit you can ever possibly imagine happening to women who mm -hmm. are basically like exploited in the film. Completely. Out the butt. Yeah. I think laying around nude all the time, chained up <laughs> to different things. There's one scene in the movie where they have a bullseye 
painted on a girl's ass. Right. And they play a game of darts. Right. Yeah, there's another thing that they call the doctor scene, where this crazy ass doctor comes around and performs like really botched brain surgery. Um, it's just if you like exploitation films, you like traumas, early, early stuff, or you know, probably like in the, the 80s. You know, this wasn't really even trauma, it was just distributed. Yeah. Really. But if you like their stuff, traumas, real stuff from the 80s, you'll love this film. It's sick. Weird. It's probably one of the most gratuitous films I've ever seen. And think about the time when it came out. I'm thinking it came out in 76, 77, around that time. Yeah, I can only imagine audiences singing it then. No, so, surprisingly, this film was rated X when it came out. Mm -hmm. But that is Blood Sucked and Freaks. Yeah. We'll move on to move on to a movie that a lot of people may have seen, but I, again, I don't hear a lot of people talk about it that often. Is uh, a Brian De Palma joint, right? Right. There's another one. I think it came out in '76. Carrie with Sissy Spacek, and uh, this is one of the very first uh, movies adapted from a Stephen King novel. Right? I think it might be it the, was the, the first. first. Yeah. And uh, Carrie is the misfit in school. She's picked on. And she recently, in the movie, finds these powers. You know, she has telekinesis stuff, sort of. And uh, uh, it's just got the last 20 minutes of the movie is freaking amazing. It's, it's one of the more original horror films that you will ever see. And uh, <clears throat> I just love it. It's a perfect movie to watch on Halloween. It's got that, you know, similar to the film Halloween. It's got the same look to it, you know, the... Tinted orange fall season. It just, I enjoyed it. Great little movie. Tell me, this is like one of the very first films I ever saw. Where they took the concept of like a teen horror film. Where like everybody was in high school mm -hmm. and it was kind of like some of the stuff they talked about. Like there's the opening scene where she starts her period and all this stuff. Yeah. yeah. And you can see her naked too. And that's, yeah, Sissy Space. That's not a good thing. I mean, I like Sissy Space. She's a great actor and everything, but I never wanted to see her naked. She's a ginger. So that, you know, doesn't help. Freckle titties didn't work. But, you remember the, the chant they had? Plug it up, plug yeah. it up. See, you just don't believe the kids. Well, that's the one thing I had a problem with the movie. You don't believe kids could be that cruel. So I couldn't believe it. But the thing about it was, that's the first time that I've ever like, really seen that kind of stuff actually talked about openly in a film mm -hmm. of any kind. So it's pretty groundbreaking. In the end, everybody knows about the end scene in the film. That's like one of the biggest. It's just, it's it's built up so well, and just the, the visuals in it, the way it's shot, and this is back when Brian De Palma could actually make films work a bug. Is Brian De Palma, is he the guy that did the Black Dahlia? Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Th that's a movie I couldn't make it through. I mean, I make it something, through a lot of shit. Something happened with Brian Something happened with him. I think he started believing his own high. But, this movie right here is awesome. Go watch it on Halloween night. Scare the shit out of some kids. Watch it with some kids. Scare them. Scare your camera. Alright, so up next, we're going to be talking about a film that I don't think gets any kind of recognition. And when it does get recognized, it usually gets recognized for the wrong reasons, for being too long and overly boring. But if you're going into a film and you want a high-octane, action-packed, you know, brain-dead type mm -hmm. of film, then this is not the film for you, okay? Yeah, a lot of people would say any Cronenberg film, right. you know, wouldn't be for you. Yeah, they call this stuff uh, psychological horror, and it is usually pretty long, but it's got a great story, but this is David Cronenberg's The Brood. It's The Brood. Look at that. Yeah. So, probably most well known for the end scene in this film as well, in which Samantha Eger does something that you would never think Samantha Eger would fucking do in a film. Very weird. And Very weird. Yeah. But, it's also got an amazing storyline to me, which is that a woman can manifest rage and anger physically through a series of like small little kids in sweatsuits that go around and hit people with baseball bats and mm -hmm. kill people. So whoever she doesn't like, they normally end up something bad happening to them through these little kids. Yeah, Cronenberg throughout his career, especially early on, has done plenty of bizarre little movies. And you know, from all the stuff I've seen, this is by far the weirdest of them all. It's definitely like for a Halloween type of movie, it's definitely perfect because it gives you that feeling like you're in a fucking dream or something. Mm -hmm. It's not really, it makes sense, like it's not like an Argento film where it's plotless, but it's just kind of surreal and you kind of feel sucked into this little world where this, none of this stuff really makes any sense. But if you're looking for that type of horror film where it's actually got a lot of plot and some real actors in it, then I would highly recommend that you check out The Look at that! It's a cheap Look at the room. 
It's a cheap little DVD too, as I remember. Yeah, there's kids. Yeah, you can get it for five bucks at Walmart. You used to. Be. Yeah. But speaking of being sucked into a world, the <laughs> nether world. <laughs> sucking into worlds. A nether world, if you will. Oh God. The ultimate movie to watch on Halloween. Don Coscarelli's Phantasm. And we've mentioned this one a lot on the show, and rightfully so, because until this, still to this day, I think it's an underrated horror film. Uh, again, the mood is perfect for how the music, the music will, alone will scare the fuck out of you. Right. Uh, and of course, Angus Scrimp. I couldn't picture anybody else as the tall man in the movie. The movie is, it, it, you know, honestly, like a lot of stuff in it, I know a lot of people bitch about it, that doesn't make sense. Well, uh, it doesn't really. A lot of stuff doesn't make sense in the movie. I'll be They're honest. right. <laughs> they are right. But, I mean, you know, all you, I think the problem with today's films is you know too much. In this movie, you didn't know what the hell was going on. All you knew was there was a weird, bizarre, six foot, six foot five uh, tall man with little, you know, minions running around, uh, you know, stealing the bodies. And it's and it's just the way it was made and put together and stuff. It's one of the best uh, independent horror films ever made, in my opinion. And I think it's a uh, it's right up there with Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Halloween, The Exorcist. I, I put it in that same level just because of the structure of the movie, the way it was put together, the music. Don Coscarelli basically, you know, he was the writer, director, cinematographer. He did it all in this movie, and uh, this is a true independent film. It's one of the best independent horror films you will ever see. Yeah, talk about a movie taking you off guard. Like, there was nothing even remotely close to this stuff coming out in the U.S. during the time period when this movie came out. But, I've always kind of thought that this film was almost like a European horror film that kind yeah. of thinly disguised itself as an American horror film. It's kind of, it, it mixes like Baba and Argento and a bunch of different really, you know, Really Italian influences in there, and, but actually, I think Cost really managed just to take those and use some real filmmaking techniques to make this film better than most of the Italian counterparts that came out before it. But this is truly one of those films where you're like, I have never seen anything like this shit. Yeah, ever. entirely original. Yeah, so you gotta check. And it's an excellent film to watch on Halloween. And the sequel. I watch not that it. Bad I watch it pretty much every year around the Halloween season. So you enjoy the hell out of that. It'll be fun. Speaking of Italian motherfuckers, and speaking of this, this to me, this movie's always kind of been like the Italian version of what happened to Poltergeist. Because they say this next film was directed by Umberto Baldwin, but I, I sorely beg to differ. I think that it was probably most likely directed by Dario Argento, who was like the producer of the film. But this is 1986's Demons. Demons is actually the exact opposite of another film I was talking about, a film like The Brood, in the fact that this film is all about action and pace and really, really fast editing and like an MTV style around that time soundtrack that includes bands like, you know, like Accept and, right. you know, just a ton of metal bands from around that area. And you've got a group of kids that go into a theater for a show. One of them picks up a mask. I don't know why the other person picks up a, like a metal mask to try it on. Which tries on the cups and starts turning her into a demon, okay? <laughs> so, as she's turned into a demon, anybody she comes in contact with and scratches and yeah. bites or anything, and I, comes and turns into a demon. I, I tend to think that it's a little more like a zombie movie, you know? I mean, it works like a zombie movie, sort of. It's like, a everybody. zombie movie, yeah, and the fact that there's like a bunch of people that try to barricade themselves in this one place against like a horde of these creatures, which are just yeah. demons instead of and zombies. It, it, you know, it's definitely a fun movie to watch. I was surprised I liked it as much as I did, because I remember not liking it as much, you know, back in the day watching it, so it's a pretty fun little movie. The great thing about it, too, is a lot of what was going on in Italy around this time period was all about gore, gore, and more gore. This and whores. Yeah, and whores. This film is packed full of both of them, really, whores mm -hmm. and gore. So, if you want that type of film... I think everybody just came out with They just re-released it. And it was out of print forever. A lot of people were trying to pick it up. That's demons. Buy demons, it. go buy it. And buy demons too. That's like a, a troll two version of demons. It is. It's like it's almost exactly like demons. Look. Up next is a movie that's on DVD, but it's on a really generic platinum DVD, which 
we all know comes out with some of the most atrocious transfers right. for films on the man. They're also the one behind the one transfer for prom night before uh, Ecclebridge got hold of it. Yeah, it's a movie starring, supposedly starring Gene Simmons and Ozzy Osbourne, and also Skippy from Family Ties. I think his uh, name is Mark Price in the movie. This is Trick or Treat, and this is like an 80s metal horror film, right? Because this is around the same time when all those bands were popular as hell. And actually, the the, the soundtrack, Fast Eddie Clark of Motorhead, had his own band at the time. Fast Way. Yeah, Fast Way. And, and the soundtrack, if I'm being quite honest with you, is better than the movie. But the movie's still pretty damn good. You have a kid, he's an outcast, he's a metalhead too. He loves the band. I'm not even sure what the band is called. I know the singer is Sammy Kerr. And he dies in a plane crash. And of course, uh, Skippy in the movie, uh, Mark Price, I can't remember his name, is distraught by that fact. And, uh, you know, he, he don't know what to do. He's thinking of suicide. He's got suicidal tendencies, which was another shitty punk, band. Hardcore around, punk band, yeah. Around that time, a little bit later. I don't know, I'm sure. But he meets up with, I think the character's name was DJ Duke in the movie. Gene Simmons. It was Gene Simmons. And he gets a record, which was Sammy Kerr's last recording ever, and it's like the only copy. And what do you know, folks? That album is haunted. Anybody that listens to that album has bad shit happen to them. They do. Yeah. Bad intentions. And all this leads up to an awesome ending where... Sammy Kerr himself comes back to life through an amplifier. If that's not metal, I don't know what it is. And sings an awesome metal anthem called Trick or Treat. And this movie <laughs> is called Trick or Treat. And hey, it's, it, it's a fun little flick if you're a metalhead from the 80s and you love cheesy horror movies. This is a great one to watch. And it's called Trick or Treat, so it makes sense to watch it on Halloween. So the last film that I want to talk about, I just recently rewatched this film because it was on television for some reason. But it's not really that well known because now there's a TV series that gets more recognition than the film does. Yeah. But to me, Anthony Michael Hall can go fuck a butt because he's nowhere near as good as Christopher Walken is. Okay. In the original I'm film. sure he's fucked a few butts. Yeah, he looks like he has. This is the original David Cronenberg, The Dead Zone. Now. I, I sense a theme with Uncle Bill over Dave Cronenberg. Once again, well, if you want to move around Halloween, I don't think there's really anybody better than Cronenberg. Once again, though, we're talking about a long film that is really plot-driven, so just bear with me, okay? If you've seen the TV series, you probably already know the, or read the book, you know the plot of this, but it's about a guy who gets into a car accident. He's in a coma for five years, and after he wakes up, he can actually, if he touches people, comes into any kind of direct contact with stuff that they've touched, and he can see into the future to see how they're going to die, basically. All right. Okay? So, Christopher Walken is the guy, Johnny, in the film that can do this. And this is before Christopher Walken got all, like, Tourette's syndrome, where he's all, like... And he's in these stupid oh, comedies you know, all the time. Yeah. I, I think... This is Christopher that, Walken right after Deer Hunter, which is yeah. probably one of the serious movies ever made, and I hate it. But, yeah. <laughs> Plus, that movie's way too fucking long. Yeah. But that's beside the point. This is Chris Walken when he actually was trying to act and wasn't all kind of, you know, kitschy and like he is now. Mm -hmm. So, it's also got a really demented Martin Sheen in it, who was actually a really good actor around this time. I don't know what happened to him either. Good story. You sure it's not Joe Estevez? I'm positive it's not okay. Joe Estevez. Because Joe Estevez is the best actor of the Sheen family. Sheen he's definitely the family. most prolific actor. Yeah. I think he's been in like a thousand B movies now. But, yeah, if you've never seen the actual movie, The Dead Zone, fuck the TV series, go out and buy this. And go out and buy The Dead Zone. So, what is that? We've talked about, what, 12 movies? Right. And pick and choose in. I mean, you don't want to watch 12 movies on Halloween? I don't know if you could possibly do that. Could you do that? Yeah, you could do that. I think we did it one year. We tried. 12, start at midnight on Halloween and go the whole day until the next day. Don't sleep. Watch all these movies. And we'll guarantee you that you'll probably be sleepy by then. I guarantee you have a massive fucking headache. The amount of time we did actually try to watch like like six or seven movies in one yep. night. God damn, I'm glad we don't ever do we're that. We're crazy. Again. We were crazy. We don't do that anymore. We just watch, we watch four, four movies a week every week now. Yeah. 
You don't ever have to remind me about this shit. I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, I mean that's just our Halloween picks for the year 2007. Maybe if you people out there enjoy it, we could start doing this every year. This could be a little tradition where we talk about some interesting horror films and uh, good ones to watch on the Halloween season on Halloween night. So another thing I was thinking of, uh, bear with me, is we always talk about uh, DVDs and we review films to watch on Halloween, but what about shit like, here's what I was thinking, nobody ever talks about books that you can buy on Halloween or anything like that. Mm. And Tim Gross has got some killer fucking books out yeah. that just review horror films, right? Yeah. You know, I can't think of any better way if you're actually going to try to read around Halloween. Yeah, which we don't like to yeah, read, but that, Tim Gross's reviews are nice and short. So. Yeah, I mean, come on, nobody really wants to read anyway. Yeah. Another great little book you can get, it's a magazine actually, and we're in it. We are. It's the new double issue of Room Org Magazine, issue 72. And you might be asking yourself, how the fuck did two hick dick sons of bitches like you get into Room War Magazine? Yeah. And I would answer by saying, I have no idea. We're, we're silly like that. But we're in it. There's a car coming over here. Yeah. Oh, I fucking hate we like, yeah, We'd like to wish everybody a happy Halloween. Have a safe Halloween. Don't go out and kill people. Go watch movies on Halloween. I know a lot of people like to be destructive on Halloween. They like to throw toilet paper and soak people's cars. Don't do that, yeah. folks. That's, that's, that's childish. Don't, don't throw eggs at elderly people. I mean, even though we, the we did that last year. Don't go to the Holiday Inn, safe Halloween, and smack around little kids and steal their candy. Go that's boo that's booze it up at home, watch some horror films, watch Trick or Treat with Mark Price, Ozzy Osbourne, and Gene Simmons. And have fun this Halloween season. And be sure to listen to us only on DeadPit.com. You watch it, you watch this off, I'll kill your whole thing. Somebody in there opening the door. 